So the uh, the final moments are approaching, and um, the last words, the final words, are uh, with Anneli. I'm very happy that uh, she will deliver our closing speech today. Um, since she has the last word, I use this opportunity already now to thank all of you uh, for having attended the conference. I think we spent um, two interesting and funny days together. So many thanks to all of you also before the conference for all your collaboration, for contributing that everything went so smooth um, with the papers, with the presentation and everything. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Thank you so much. And um, of course, I also thank uh, the organizers, the local organizers, the logistic team, um, Stefan and Anja, um, and all the many people in the background. Without their help, um, this would have not been possible and would have not worked so smoothly. So a big thanks again. That was it from my side. I look forward to seeing you in one or another way next year. And um, Anneli, the floor is yours for the last uh, item of this conference. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Andreas, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was quite interesting. You had interesting and funny days. So what on earth were you doing here? You, you tell me later on. Yes. So may I first congratulate you, Andreas, and the team also behind the scene for having set up this really impressive program for the second annual ECB Banking Supervision Research Conference. So I think that we need an applause. And I also would like to thank all speakers, discussions, session chairs, participants for having contributed to this outstanding venue. These are extremely interesting venues and the research is really backup for the supervisory work we do. It's always better to do decisions when you can base it on, on real research, on facts. So over the previous two days, we have seen a wide range of highly relevant research results, and we could uh, follow inspiring discussions. This year, as you know, I think everybody knows by now that we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the SSM, and I am particularly happy that uh, research after these 10 years since the start of SSM has an established role to play in ECB banking supervision. In fact, it is the independence, may I emphasize the independence from policy that empowers research with the role of being a trusted advisor to supervisory policy as it has successfully done for monetary policy since ECP's foundation more than 25 years ago. From this conference, I see four main themes as takeaways for lessons learned. I'm sure that there would be many, many more, so don't be mad at me. Challenges ahead and questions to ask. I would like to encourage future research to further improve our understanding on these topics. The supranational architecture of the SSM was clearly beneficial for the safety and soundness of banks being supervised by the SSM. The reduction of non-performing loans during the last 10 years after the great financial crisis was a remarkable achievement for the SSM. Nevertheless, there are still areas of concern. For example, cross-border financial integration across the area has not developed as yet to the extent that may would have hoped. And why would that be the case? I think each one of us has his or her own views, but uh, just can be asked, are, the, are there still impediments caused by regulation or supervisory actions like taxes? And are they taxation issues, accounting rules, inconsistencies in the regulatory framework? and the approach to capital or liquidity waivers by national supervisors in absence of EDIS? Or is it rather a question of banks' own business interests and incentives? That is, there is no attractive business case to promote. There are various reasons 
to promote uh, uh, further cross-border integration. So there are various reasons and would be good and 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 uh, really important to have further research that could provide useful insights on this topic. I know Eduard could already give us a one-hour lecture on this topic, but later, later. Then from supervisory practices, but also from research findings, we know that good governance is strongly related to banks' overall performance and success. And that the converse might be true as well. Our former chair, Andrea Enria, said in one of his many speeches that well-run banks don't fail. While ECB has emphasized the need to improve the governance in banks, it could be worthwhile getting also more tangible evidence of the impact of healthy governance on the well-being of banks and also of the opposite, which in my view at least is pretty apparent, the impact of poor governance practices and aggressive risk-taking on bank failures. There we have many examples from the past. But why do they then weaker banks have a comparatively higher interest to attract deposits at higher costs for interest, thereby adversely affecting their own profits? What are the implications for banking supervision? We have also seen weaker banks attracting deposits cross-border, paying a higher interest than their competitors and relying on their national DGS. In my view, it can be a harmful market practice, and therefore I encourage further research on the topic. Of course, there are consumer protection issues as well, and circumvention of the regulation issues, in my view. Then, cybersecurity and its risk to bank safety and financial stability is and will be a key issue that banks will have to tackle even more rigorously and also take into account what is happening in the, in the world at this very moment and whether when we have these um, countries that just want to harm, harm their neighbours. Banking supervisors have alerted the financial industry since a long time and I have no doubts that banks are aware of those risks. And if they were not before, they certainly are now after their recovery capacities have been assessed in our cyber resilience stress test. But what is driving the incentives for banks to invest more cybersecurity? My own answer is survival. Do we face private versus public good problem where each bank alone could be too small to invest in the security of its infrastructure part? Instead, a joint coordinated initiative by the industry to step up such investments, guided by banking regulation and supervision, would be needed to eventually mitigate cyber risks. And then we have artificial intelligence. It's one of the dominant current technological innovations with increasing importance for many areas of our society, and banking supervision is not left out. And we know that it will have a huge impact on most, more or less everything. Yesterday, we have learned that the supervisory actions based on subtech induced banks to reveal inconsistencies in their reported credit risk and to tighten credit to less credit worthy firms, thereby reducing bank risk taking. Being aware that supervisors use subtech banks may eventually become more prudent. Hence, subtech may improve supervisory effectiveness. But as in many areas of our life, also artificial intelligence has two sides. We are facing a choice between risks and opportunities, between lim limits of its usefulness and benefits for improving our tasks. And there are already a lot of uh, analytical work uh, done on the uh, related risks related to, to AI regarding the, the data or hallucinations or uh, herding behavior uh, of the uh, 
uh, algorithmic bias. So there's plenty to study. Here again, the research comes in to warn us on the risks and limitation of artificial intelligence. In the field of econometrics, the famous Lucas critique revealed the risk of relying on backward-looking empiric empirical models for policy analysis when agents have rational expectations. Hence, when technologies such as artificial intelligence make use of information generated in the past, to what extent can we derive answers to present problems or to solutions for answering questions related to solve future problems? An algorithm that derives those answers and recommendations solely based on past information is potentially found to produce myopic, not to say misleading, answers. In my view, independent research is indispensable to create new, innovative knowledge and to continuously push back the frontier of current understanding. This is also true for banking supervision. I hope that independent research will further strengthen its role being a trusted advisor for supervisory policies. And once again, I wish to thank you all for having participated in, in this conference.